Hello everyone, in this lecture we are going to understanding, how to set configuration for nozzle analysis options in PV Elite software. Our flagship courses are, Master Static Equipment Design, and PVE Lite, ASME Section 8 Division 2, and Master Welded Storage Tank, as per API 650. We have curated courses to suit your learning needs, so do visit our learning platform for more details on scutoid.thinkific.com. The second option is the nozzle analysis option. So nozzle analysis option, again, you'll find that in configurations tab. Earlier, in older version, it was in the load cases. How many of you remember that? In the earlier versions, I think 2019, it was there in the load cases. I think till 2021 version, it was in load cases. Okay. Now it has been changed to this location. Okay. So there are multiple options. Now, what is that for nozzle analysis? First is nozzle or clip design pressure option. Okay. So if you are designing a nozzle, you will find these multiple options available for you. Now, which one of these you should select for nozzle design? That will depend upon the conditions which are having for the project. But let us elaborate a little bit. So first one, MAWP plus static head to the element bottom. So if my nozzle is connected to that element, but bottom of that element, till the bottom of that element, static head will be considered. So if your nozzle is changing to any elevation, but it is not going down to the other element. Okay. Then it is not a problem. Okay. It will be, you'll be able to, you don't need to change it. Okay. But later on, if the nozzle elevation is changed to an element, which is down to that for a vertical vessel, then your design also has to be changed. You have to change the, uh, you have to rerun the design again by changing the nozzle. Make sense? The first one. Yeah. For the second one, design pressure plus static head. Here you are just taking the design pressure instead of MAWP. Okay. So normally, uh, design pressure, as you know, is less than MAWP. So if you are taking MAWP, that is the more conservative design. So people prefer with MAWP option. Okay. So you'll be not using this but one of the three MAWP options. Okay. So we'll have to now select which one. Okay. So see the third one, overall MAWP plus static head of the governing element. Okay. So if you see, calculate one design internal pressure for all the nozzles located on the vessel based on the static liquid pressure to the bottom of that element that is governed. Okay. So if the nozzle location is on the vessel changes due to client request, there is no need to rerun the nozzle calculation because the pressure used in this calculation does not change. Okay. This model or method is ideal for designing new vessel, generally the most conservative option. Okay, So Pivilite is also suggesting you to use this overall MAWP plus static head of the weakest element. Okay. Which element will govern? The MAWP, the weakest element, right? So you that. Okay, so that will give you the conservative option. What is the last one? MAWP plus static head to the nozzle. So in this case, you are just taking the static head nozzle. Okay. So you can use any of the MAWP option, but if you use the third one, then even though elevation is changing in the future for any reason, you do not have to redo the design. Okay. So you'll be having advantage that position of the nozzle will not be creating any problem for you. Okay. So if you want that, definitely it will be more conservative. So, but if you want, you don't want to change the design or you don't want the design change to happen depending upon the elevation, because you feel that elevation is just uh, no, very rough value has been given and it can change. So you can use this option. Okay. If the elevations are very firm, you don't expect them to change. You're designing for a final 
design, then you can use this option also. So this will give you more accurate design. So accurate means uh, it will be for that nozzle elevation. Okay. Make sense? So that is this option. Okay. Second one is the sorting option. Okay. So sorting option of the nozzle. So like if you have multiple nozzles in this vessel. So when you are printing the report, how you want uh, the nozzles to get printed. Whether you want in a proper sequence like N1, N2, N3 or you want in the name ascending, you want name descending, you want by diameter ascending, diameter descending. Or you don't want to do any sorting based on how you have made it should be able to generate the report in that okay so you can select based on that okay. so normally we can select name ascending or you can also select no sorting okay if you don't work so name ascending is can be preferred because it will give you a sequence so it will be easier to find okay. so you can select that not a very important Thing, just the printout of the report. Nothing will change. Okay. Nozzle load applied at the end of nozzle. What does this mean? Why this option? Nozzle load applied at the end of the nozzle. So piping load. So if I don't select this option, then it will be applied at the junction. Okay. If I select, then the loads will be applied at the end of the nozzle so again depending upon where you have that load given as an input if it is given as a shell junction then don't select okay. if it is given as a flange end then you have to select this option yes okay so next for pd5500 okay so we will not be using that no corrosion on inside wells that is again for nozzles okay nozzle if you don't want to have corrosion inside but that does not make sense because if corrosion is happening in the vessel it will happen in the nozzle wells also so we don't select this option compute increased nozzle no uh, nozzle thickness increased nozzle thickness i don't know let us see what exactly it is saying increased nozzle thickness so select the select to calculate the minimum nozzle wall to account for external loads okay so in case of pressure vessels are designed and built long before the piping system okay so this is generally uh we are using if you don't have pipe load but you want to have a higher thickness because if later on if pipe load is coming it should be able to use that okay still you thickness should not be changed compute and print areas for small nozzles okay so you know that for less than two inches size and for thickness greater than 10 and size less than three inch they come in those kind of nozzles come in small openings okay so code does not perform any calculation pv light does not perform any calculation and it is not required also but still if you want to print that nozzle reinforcement calculation you can select this option okay so you can keep selected not selected both are okay, okay. not a problem okay sometimes this also you may find in the specification okay so remember all these job specific settings are very much particular to your specification. So when you are reading specification, this is where mainly that changes will be affected. Okay, So you have to read it very carefully. Nothing more important here. So now uh, Appendix 1-9, okay, that is the alternate method for reinforcement calculation. So if you want to do that, don't want to use UG37, you can select that. Again, for 1-7 instead of UG37. Okay. So, this is 1-9 is for uh, nozzle, bigger nozzle sizes. Okay. But we never use 1-9. We typically use 1-7. Okay. 
So you don't need to select this option. I think 1 9 is uh, now deleted. It's not even available now. So 1 7 is what we use. For flange D rating, earlier we used to select multiple options, but now UG44 is what we use for D rating calculation. So that is what you have to select. Now, this also is very important. Okay. So if you guys have done PV light earlier, you might have faced that when you D rate, plunge rating will always increase most of the time. Okay. So it was creating lots of problems. Whenever we D rate, it will ask for very high flange rating. Okay. That was because FM values are higher okay, in the current code. But there is a very recent uh, end code case which has been uh, released uh, that has revised the FM values. Okay, that was released in 2024 itself. So it is definitely not part of code right now. But that code case is valid. And you, if FM values you want to revise as per that, you can use this option. Okay. So you know, if you want to change FM value, that process is a little bit uh, little bit elaborative. So let us see what we do for FM value if you want to change. Okay. So you have to do in some settings. Okay. So you'll be going to file option. Okay. What I'm talking if you have to do change the FM value. FM factor which we use for D rating. Okay. So that is what okay, we select. So file option, then you go to system folder. Okay. So there will be a window which will be opening. So this is a window. Okay. Then you have to find the FM value. There will be a file. FM values for ANSI plan. Okay, so you just select that. Okay. And then you can update the FM values here. Okay, remember not to change anything. Okay, and keep the format as it is. Don't change the format, don't delete any lines because this is the setting file for PV Lite. Okay, so if you change, it may start giving errors. Okay. So if you want, this is how you can change the FM setting values. So now uh, there is B31.3 stress check which is performed on the nozzles. Many times you will find the nozzles failing because of this calculation. Okay. That is the piping uh, from B31.3. It takes some load on the nozzle and it calculates based on that. So if you don't want to do that calculation, because that is optional, right? We are not designing as per B31.3. So it is an optional. If you don't want to perform, you can exclude it. But this is a recommended value to perform. Okay? It's a good engineering practice to have this option. But if you are facing problem, it is not a mandatory. So you can select. So if you are selecting, this means B31.3 calculation will not happen. Make sense? For in-depth training and to learn more about these courses, register with the link in the description.